Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we're taking a look at class rebalancing and we're focusing on the combat class, having already looked at both blast and speed types. I have to say, your feedback in the community so far to these videos has been outstanding. I don't want to rush through them and do them too quickly one after another, so I know you guys have been kind of impatient waiting for them, but I do appreciate your support and your enthusiasm for them. So I'm doing the best that I can to give you guys quality content that you can really chew over and think about. So let's jump right into the combat class. It's quite an interesting uh, class. It's gone through a lot of changes. It used to be one of the worst classes actually, uh, but Netmarble has tried to improve a lot of the characters either through rebalancing. You know, we once upon had a rebalancing patch for Blade. We had one for Black Panther. We had one for Captain America. We had one for Jessica Jones. A lot of the characters in the combat class have been retooled, tweaked. Um, and in, in addition to that, I find that more than some of the other classes, the combat class really has characters that might be very bad or very ab below average or subpar without a uniform, but who suddenly become very good with a uniform. So unlike some of the other classes, the characters that I'm going to talk about, I am assuming that they all are wearing their uniforms. So if you're looking at a character and I have the uniform on, that is the character I am referring to. I will make note if the character is dramatically worse without their uniform, but you do need to keep that in mind because it is uh, particularly important for this class. So jumping in with the first character, Beast, a new character. I'm going to tier to him soon and do a review, don't worry. But I have to say, my initial impressions about Beast were absolutely off the mark. I was wrong about Beast, about Hank McCoy, I'll admit it. He's a great character. He is phenomenal in Shadowlands. I've soloed stages at tier 1 with this build, uh, with no obelisk, with less you know, upgraded gears uh, with him. The self buff on his fifth skill is insane. It also has a stun, which allows him to go into his other skills flawlessly. His fourth skill has a huge iframe and has tweakable lightning damage, so you can give him a lightning obelisk if you want to go that route. Overall, he's a super fun character to play, and of course, he pairs super well with Logan, so who doesn't want to play with him? I think he, he's great. I don't think he needs to be upgraded at all. Ulick is an interesting character because he is one of the very few decent uh, serviceable combat super villains for that Extreme Alliance Battle Day. I do really like Ulick's kit. He's got lots of stuns, he's got guard breaks, he's got a, three, a third skill that gives him a buff against superheroes, which is very uh, meta, and some immunity. He's got a cooldown reduction trigger on uh, crits from his 4 star passive like Ancient One, which is very interesting. He's got a decent tier 2 and he's got a good uh, leadership. I think he's a great character overall. I might tier two him one day. He might actually need a uniform though to become, you know, top tier. Similarly with White Tiger, I do think she's just an average to above average character. I don't suggest anything to change about her aside from perhaps her passive. More importantly, I do think her leadership is quite bad. I would do away with these bleed leaderships until Netmarble can figure out a better way of implementing them in the game because right now they're basically useless. Um, but otherwise, she's just, you know, a 5 out of 10, a 6 out of 10. With a uniform, she might jump up, but in the meantime, that's where she stands. Crossbones, on the other hand, as far as the character rebalancing that I spoke about, he got one recently, and he's still not good enough. Uh, the problem with Crossbones stems from the fact that he has too many skills that just animate for too long. So many of his skills have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hits. So even though the damage is good, because it's spread out over so long and takes so many seconds to animate, even with max attack speed, his DPS just plummets, you know? The hallmark of a high damage character is how fast they can rattle off one or two, you know, high DPS skills. Doctor Strange 3232, Sharon Rogers uh, 5 4, and stuff like that. Um, Crossbones is the antithesis of that. He'll do damage. He's kind of tanky. He's got some iframes now. He's got some stuns. He's decent for Shadowlands. He's got a leadership. But he just takes too long. He still needs more damage. He still needs, I think, a shortening on his animations especially in order to uh, reach that kind of above average to average tier character. Cho is probably average without his uniform. He is quite good with his uniform, especially for PvP scenarios because of his fifth skill. The huge 35% reduction to damage makes him very difficult to kill. In addition to all the boosts he gets, he actually becomes very formidable. I've seen him solo speed, sh solo different Shadowland stages. His tier 2 passive makes him even better. He's got ignore dodge, he's got guaranteed dodge. He's basically got it all. Very cool character, very fun to play with. Jessica Jones, another combat character who was tweaked not that long ago along with Luke Cage. 
still needs tweaking. This is probably one of the most disappointing characters in the combat class because she's quite popular. A lot of people like Jessica. Netmarble apparently doesn't like her very much. Her skills, like crossbones, take too long to animate, damage is low, and she has no survivability. She has like a, a pseudo iframe on one of her skills, I think it's four or five. It's not enough. It's unexcusable. Her tier two passive doesn't do anything for her. The reflect is paltry. Even Luke Cage's reflect is not good enough, so of course hers isn't going to be. She has no heal like Luke Cage, and even her leadership is worth worse. She needs the jewel uniform, and she needs to probably turn into a universal, get some different skills, do some energy damage, something like that. Maybe she'll finally be good. Sif, like Cho, very, very good with her uniform. I wouldn't change anything about the character. I think she's fantastic. Super fun to play as. You can pretend you're playing The Legend of Zelda if you don't have a Nintendo Switch. It's great. She-Hulk, who looks a lot like Giant Man, according to my eyes, uh, is great as well. Um, the only thing that she's missing that the other Hulks have um, is more healing. A lot of the other Hulks have healing. She doesn't, but she does have you know, the damage reduction, the uh, super armor, stuff like that. She does have an iframe, and of course she has that very famous leadership. I think she's a pretty good character. The only thing I'd probably change is her four-star passive. I would probably give her some kind of regeneration or some kind of heal. Uh, but that's just me, given that she's a Hulk, and given that it fits thematically with that whole lineage. Giant Man used to be part of the meta with Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket even before Silk, Hulkbuster, and Loki. He's obviously fallen behind, far, far, far behind, despite the fact that he has a uniform. Uh, I think the main problem with him, as it is for a lot of combat characters, his animations take too long. Once upon a time, Crashing Footfalls, best skill in the game. Huge damage. Now not so much because it just takes too long to animate you're vulnerable and the damage just falls off because it's too uh you know long to, to to add up so i think if they cut down the animations uh time and the animations on his skills uh and crunch down his dps he might be uh suddenly a force again nebula is another one like ulick a good combat supervillain if you're not uh if you don't have carnage if you're looking for a replacement for carnage i think she's a great character overall the only issue thank you for the dimension rift that i have with nebula is her leadership it's absolutely confusing and also it sucks uh yeah increased dodge rate when there are combat characters who enter the game so you have to switch for her leadership to trigger it's just really awkward her four star passive is also terrible so i would change both of those i would probably give her some healing considering that she's mostly cybernetic considering that her gear says regeneration implant um, i think if she had a leadership that you know maybe regenerated hp for everyone for all allies maybe one percent um, below 75% every two seconds, something like Gwenpool's passive basically. That would be an awesome leadership, something like Rogue's leadership would make sense as well for the character, but I think she just needs a slight little tweak a -roni. Similarly, Bullseye, another serviceable but not quite there yet combat supervillain. With his uniform or without it, I think he's just an okay character. Um, also has a pretty useless bleed uh, passive. Otherwise, he's a good character. He just lacks survivability. He does definitely have the damage with Madness Knife. The, the Tier 2 especially tweaks up his damage more, but he just doesn't have enough to survive. So I think maybe some guaranteed dodge or some a damage reduction or a guard hit or something like that would really make him a well-rounded character. Kingpin, on the other hand, again, used to be part of the meta, used to be one of the original world boss clearers. Um, and despite his very unique uniform that changes him into DJ Khaled, uh, the character has fallen behind, mostly because he relies on his uh, clones to do damage, and his stats have just not kept up to make his clones powerful. So I think if they bumped up his stats, they bumped up his attack, they bumped up his HP and his defenses, his clones could do more work, they could stay alive longer, he would be known uh, more for those again, because he's kind of just fallen off and become useless, and then it would make his tier 2 indirectly better without actually having to buff it. So if they just buffed his stats natively, they just gave those a bump, not even at tier 1, at just at tier 2. It could really help the character. They've done that before for the likes of Yellow Jacket. Venom, on the other hand, needs a lot more than a stat boost. I actually think Venom has good stats. His, his physical attack is one of the highest in the game. However, his skills are so sad. They take too long to animate, there's too many hits, there's no iframes, there's no effects. Uh, his, his CC is not consistent and it doesn't flow properly, so you can't actually lock opponents down. Even in Shadowlands, you're going to have a hard time doing that. Um, his 4-star passive is cool because it increases his size, but the all-speed thing with his Tier 2 is one I've already discussed before. Thank you for the Dimension Rift. It's obviously 
you know, it's, it's certain to me that they didn't really look at the numbers because they're over capping his attack speed with his tier two and his four star passive. His leadership is pretty useless nowadays, so they could change his leadership specifically for him. They could boost him by giving him the anti-Venom uniform that so many fans have loved. But right now, Venom is in an awful place. You shouldn't tier two him and he needs a lot of help. Who doesn't need help is the Prince of Wakanda, baby, or the King of Wakanda, excuse me. T'Challa got a buff not that long ago, and wow, they took him from zero to hero real quick. Excellent character. Tier one, he's a beast. Tier two, he's a beast. Sorry, beast. Great, great question. Great character. No changes. Punisher, latest uniform, does a lot for the character. Without his latest uniform, he is a two at best. But with his new uniform, he's actually quite good. I do like the theme of having characters miss. I think that's something that Netmarble should explore more, especially for Punisher. But I just think these numbers are too low. You can see I've maxed out these skills intentionally. Not this one. But the number doesn't go up. And I think if they doubled this number, 50% and 60%, that would be fine. It's not going to break the game. It's not going to make Punisher suddenly the best character. But it would make fights a lot more interesting. Because he's not dodging. You're just missing him. I think that would be really cool. And I think it would actually make him better. You know what else would make him better? A better tier 2. This is pretty trash. He needs increased uh, bonus damage and increased skill damage badly. No doubt about that. His DPS is low. Blade, like Venom, needs a total rework. He needs a new uniform. Come on, Wesley Snipes. And he just needs help. All of his skills, super outdated. No iframes, no effects, no CC. Um, his leadership should be buffed. It was already buffed once before. I think it was doubled. It should probably be doubled again. Um, I still don't see it being that powerful, even if this rate was 50% chance to recover 16% of your HP. That's still worse than some of the obelisks you can roll. And that's a leadership. So compare that to 45% physical attack or... There's so many other good leaderships. I, you know, I just, I just think they could risk it and see if it works. Also, he needs more. He just all around. And he needs a new uniform. Captain America got a boost. Has a lot of uniforms, fantastic character, nothing to change. Hogan, sorry, Gorgon, Hogan, and Volstagg are three characters who I think they're fine where they are now. I actually don't think that these three characters here, the Beard Bros, need any help whatsoever. But I do think that they would all be much better off with a uniform. And we've seen recently the community rally behind Volstagg. I know, spoilers, guys, new comic issue, you should check it out. Um, but I think that they're all... Like they're all they're all almost there. They're good characters. They're they're worth investing in if you like them. They're not going to break the game. They're not going to solo any content for you or ev all content for you. But they're fun to play and they're useful. They're not useless. But they could take that step, take that jump, like Captain America did, like some other characters did, like Sif, Amadeus Cho, if they got a uniform. Hulkbuster, similarly, I like a lot of his skills. I think his tier two passive is a bit confusing because it actually nerfs his four star passive in the eyes of a lot of the community. 10% or 10 seconds of physical immunity is a lot better to some people than five seconds of all immunity, especially since a lot of it is pierceable now anyways. Um, so he was more of a tech choice against physical types and now he just seems more generic, but worse somehow. Um, and he's kind of a one-trick pony with the 5-4 being his only serviceable DPS. So if they could make some changes to his first three skills, shorten some of the animations because they're long and drawn out and bad, uh, it could make the character very, very strong. Drax might be the worst combat character in the game right now. Despite having a uniform, despite having a tier 2 passive that might look good on paper, he is just bad. Very low DPS, long animations that just don't go anywhere. Um, and just a sad end to a character who's very beloved and, you know, very important to certain runs of comics, you know. The man who put his hand through Thanos' chest is this bad, is kind of a, a pain in my heart to say. He needs a lot of help. The rest of the characters you're seeing that I've already tiered to are great, but a couple of them do need their uniforms to be at that level. Specifically, Iron Fist. He's probably one of the worst characters without his uniform who jumps tremendously with his newest uniform especially. He's, he's okay with his other two uniforms, but he goes from about a C or a D to a B to an A+. Okay, he, he went to summer school and he studied his ass off. 
Uh, another character that does get a lot from their uh, uniform, thank you for the Dimension Rift, is Red Hulk. Not a bad character without his uniform by any stretch of the imagination, but he goes from average to much, much above average with his uniform. I know that's not a phrase, but I just made it up now. Um, and despite what you might think, there are some uses for Dr. Octopus with his uniform. I don't particularly like it, but it does add a lot of flexibility to the character, so you can consider investing in it if you want. Hulk, you actually don't need a uniform for, and the rest are, you know, above average or top of their their respective uh, positions for combat hero or combat villain, respectively. The only thing I would say is I haven't had a long time to test Shang-Chi just yet, but I am finding his damage to be a little bit on the low side. I don't know if that's just the way I've set him up, but I think perhaps if I'm right about my suspicions, he does need a little bit of a damage boost. I know he gets that from his tier 2, but I haven't seen it trigger or become meaningful or see a spike in damage just yet um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that of course we've missed one character guys last but not least Hulkling I don't actually think he's as bad a character as I guess I've made you believe that I think which is a bit of a mind conundrum but uh, Hulkling does need a little bit of help. I think he's got one iframe on his kit, uh, but I think more than the iframes, it's the damage. His damage is very low. He's got, you know, quick animations, but it just doesn't hit hard enough. And his tier two passive is on a brutal cooldown. 20 seconds for something that only lasts two to five seconds is rough. This should be probably cut in half. I think if it was on a 10 second cooldown, it would be a lot better, especially if they buffed that immunity to five seconds. So every five seconds, He's immune and he gets the debuff removal. He could be a, a you know, quite a decent character if they if they did those changes to the tier two and maybe bumped up his damage by 15, 20%. I think that would be great for the character. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe he gets a uniform, who knows. So that is my analysis and those are my suggestions for the combat class. I am very intrigued by the fact that overall, looking at the whole forest, it seems like uniforms and character rebalancing have played a huge part in remodeling the combat class. And it might be interesting to take that idea and take that concept and maybe see if Netmarble can apply it to something like the speed class or a different class altogether. Let me know what you guys think of my analysis of the combat class. Let me know how excited you are for the universals. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.